Spirituality, is it a normal part of your everyday living? Now, I'm not talking about religion, but spirituality and religion are two different things. Hi, I'm Allie Bierman. I'm so glad you came by here. Today, you can find me over at yourrelationshipintelligence.com. So spirituality is about the fact that you are a divine spirit living a human experience. And yet most people in modern societies live as though they're human doings, not even human beings, but human doings. Well, your spirit is what guides everything in your life. And if you're ignoring it, then your energy is out of balance because you are energy. Everything and everyone is energy. And Einstein certainly taught us that with E equals MC squared. And Tesla spent so much effort in so many different ways to try and teach that fact. So why is the spirituality so important? Why is it so demanding? that you recognize you are an energy being because do you ever have an experience of fatigue? Do you ever feel overwhelmed? When you have an imbalance in your energy, well, there's a good reason for it. So how do you get your energy? Well, if you live in modern society, you eat clean. You get your seven and a half hours sleep. You exercise, but not too much, because that will also wipe you out. And yet still, there's fatigue. There's a, a lack of joy. There's a lack of peace. There's a lack of wonderful relationships. Why is all this going on? Your energy is what reacts with other people's energy. So how can you get your energy balanced? Well, there's something about our big energy drain that, quite frankly, I just discovered. <laughs> Didn't know about this fact and couldn't figure out why for years I've been doing everything right. And yet, there were still some challenges. Here's what I know from my practice of more than 20 years. Somewhere around the age of two, two years old, your brain says to your body, Yo, we're not getting enough sleep here to do all the repair and growing new cells that have to be done in every organ system at night while you're asleep. Do you know when you're asleep is the only time that you get rid of the cells that need to go away? Do you know it's the only time that your brain shrinks so that it can wash itself clean of the damaged and old cells of the toxins? So what does your brain do? It says, I know what we're going to do to handle this. We're going to very subtly, so this organism doesn't notice it, start shutting down organ systems really a little bit at a time so people don't notice it until decades later when the chronic conditions appear and the mainstream medicine calls it aging. But what can you do to reverse that energy drain? Next week I'm going to explain why that energy drain is happening for now. I want you to realize that your greatest tool to support you is what the ancient philosophers go back to Plato in the West, go back to the monks in Tibet, in China, in India. We're talking more than 5,000 years people have practiced what science is now able to test. A neuroscientist can look at pictures of somebody else's brain and say, aha, uh -huh, look, that's what's going on when they do these behaviors. 
people for 5,000 years, people have been practicing on themselves, being aware of the kinds of energy that will feed you. They're not woo-woo. I'm talking about yoga, meditation, and qigong. Now, when I started doing qigong at the beginning of this year, my arm was about like this, and I could go about this far. And over time, I was able to go like this. It's like, you know what? The surgeon who did that brain surgery said, this is the best I'm ever going to do. Never going to be able to go like that. And I noticed a lot of other things feeling really good, and I thought, what's different in my life? And what was different was the Qigong. And that's when it hit me. Qigong is the practice of balancing your Qi, your life force, your energy, your vital force. Yoga does the same thing. Someone didn't just one day randomly say, oh, when I get in this position, this feels really good, so I'm going to do it. Or I'm going to do this for the flexibility they noticed. That babies, as they grow up, and go through different developmental stages, they naturally do these postures. They're naturally balancing their chi. Meditation. I've been meditating for decades. And what I know is if I have a question, I can ask it as I'm going into the meditation. And I'll always get the answer. I can do it before I go to sleep at night too. And I'll always get the answer. I seek. I don't know how many songs and books I wrote in the middle of the night because I had a question and I asked for a solution and woke up in the middle of the night so, with it. So, Qigong, meditation, yoga, do one of them that feels good for you, that works for you. If you try one that doesn't work, try another one. There are so many different kinds of Qigong. There are so many different teachers of yoga and breath and the same meditation. Now, if you think that you don't know how to meditate, that you don't know how to use your breath to clear your mind, I've got an incredible new book that I've been studying, and I have a super duper offer for you. Today's video is sponsored by Audible. The power of vital force, your energy is your vital force. The power of your vital force, fuel your energy, purpose, and performance with ancient secrets of breath and meditation. And the, oh, it's just chock full of all the scientific studies and the information that you left brain people would like to have. You can get it for free at audibletrial.com forward slash Allie B. And because it has exercises, the actual telling you what to do, doesn't tell you about it, doesn't make you go out and buy a course. The actual exercises that Rashri Patel delineates in the audio, they're right there on your PDF. You can print it out, do them, because what's the point of reading about something without taking action? She's taught millions of people around the world. She started out as one of four teachers teaching what she teaches. Now there are 50,000 teachers teaching it. So if you're ready so if you're to quiet down the noise in your mind, you know those 65,000 thoughts a day, and now they're saying it might be as many as 80,000. You know, 95% of those thoughts are the same you thought the day before, and the day before, and the day before, and the year before, and the decade before. What if you knew how to cut down on the number of those? What if you knew where that was coming from so finally you could stop it, you could change it? You think maybe you'd have some more energy to enjoy your life? I'll be back next week to explain to you the biggest energy hog in your life, because it's probably not what you think. You know, I'm addicted to learning. I constantly learn new things. And this one, I don't know why it never occurred to me, 
but it didn't, and I'm anxious to share it with you next time. Again, I'm Allie Beerman, and you'll find me over at yourrelationshipintelligence.com.